Hello everyone, welcome to Hall of Fame Live today on Instagram Live. We are shaking things up a bit at the request of our very special guest today. We are going to be joined by Marat Safin momentarily. Before we do that, I am just going to pin our comment up here and I'll sum it up for all of you. It pretty much says we want you to ask questions today. We're gonna get your input as well as some questions from myself. We're gonna cover a wide range of topics with Marat when he joins us. If we can get that comment to pin, that would be very helpful. Think I missed it, that's okay. I'm gonna remind you guys several times today, we want your input and I have a very special social media expert in Newport and she is gonna help me catch some of those questions if I happen to miss them on the first run through, and that way I can come back to them if we're in the middle of a conversation uh, with Marat at the moment. We can circle back to some of those questions as well. So thank you so much to all of you for joining us. As I mentioned, we are going to be joined by Marat Safin here in just a moment. He is gonna be coming to us from Moscow, Russia, and we are going to be covering things from his career to, I'm hoping we talk about his cats, I'm hoping we also talk about uh, perhaps his sister, Dinara, and I'm gonna give you a little sneak peek. We have some photos to show Marat today. We are gonna give him a little reminder of some of those great memories in his career and see what he has to say about some of those. Just a little refresher. As you know, Marat Safin, a member of the International Tennis Hall of Fame class of 2016, he is a two-time Grand Slam champion, a two-time Davis Cup champion. He owns 15 career singles titles, and I see he has joined, and I'm hoping that Marat is going to send me a request here. There he is. Let's go live. Yes. Going live with Marat here. Just in a moment. We should see his face coming up soon. We're all getting used to, there he is. Hi, how are you? Hi, Marat, good to see you. Good to see you too. How is everything? We j I just gave you a, I'm gonna tilt this camera up for me just okay. a little bit. Yeah, you see me? I see you perfectly. You're, you're getting good at these digital interviews. I've seen you, uh, you were Improving. talking about VR tennis yesterday, Roland yeah. Garros, do you like doing interviews from home? Well, uh, I have some free time, so it's I'm getting uh, used to the gadgets. Uh, sure, no, I, I think along improving with, day with by day. Us. But but you yes. joined with no problem, and we are very happy to have you. And I just gave you, I read off all of your credentials. Uh, but again, of course, a member of the International Tennis Hall of Fame class of 2016, and we are going to talk a little bit more about that a little bit later. But but first off, Marat, as we know, this has been a tough time for a lot of people. How are you? How are things in Russia? Well, uh, here we've been uh, in lockdown for uh, about two months. No, yeah, actually about two months. So now on, uh, on the 15th, they're going to open some, uh, they're going to open up a little bit more. So now the people, they can move around, but it's uh, restricted uh, times. And uh, yeah, you need to get um, a pass QR code to be able to go over the car. So it's quite difficult. Well, in, in normal life, if things were normal right now, we would be nearing the end of Roland Garros. So I'm curious, do you have a favorite Roland Garros memory? Well, for me, uh, any time uh, being in Paris and playing uh, for Roland Garros, it's a special feeling. Uh, every uh, tennis player is going to tell you the same. It's a special atmosphere. So every day that you spend there, it's a special one. So it's difficult to pick up one specific one. But I think it's... Um, I would choose the first um, first match in '98 that I passed the qualifiers and I beat uh, Agassi Andre, and uh, for me it was a breakthrough. And from that moment, I became a real tennis player. My journey began there. Did you have any? Did you have a good feeling before that match? Did you have any idea something special might happen that day? Well, we played um, uh, we played a couple of months before uh, Davis Cup in uh, Atlanta against you guys, and uh, I played against Andre. He kicked my ass really badly, three, three, and three, and uh, he touched my ego big time. And then when I saw, 
and then when I uh, saw him in the main draw, uh, I already been winning a couple of good matches in, uh, already in uh, big tournaments. I played Barcelona that year already a Grand Prix. And before that, uh, before Atlanta, I was playing only challengers. So I had no experience. And then I got, uh, I got better in two months. And then I had Andre. And I said, OK, I'm going to try to do my best. And I think I'm going to have a chance, especially it's a clay court. And Andre is, um, uh, in my opinion, is more of the hardcore player. So if I, I'm young, hungry, nothing to lose, play against a big, uh, big player and playing in a big stadium. So why not? Enjoy. I love that. All right. Well, if you are joining us just now, know that we would love to have your questions from Rat coming in. If we happen to miss them on the first run through, I have a little helper back in Newport. Megan Urbis is going to be sending me a text with some of those that we can maybe circle back a little bit later in our chat. Sure. So we'd love to hear all of your questions. Murat, if you see any in Russian, feel free to jump in and answer those. But since we're on Instagram Live today, I feel like we have to ask some Instagram-related questions. And the first okay. one is, is maybe the most obvious one. Fly Monkey RUS. I'm assuming the RUS is Russia. Where does Fly Monkey come from? Well, I had uh, my um, a few years ago, like many years ago, I had a nickname uh, Monkey. Uh, people around me they used to call me Monkey. I don't know for some reason. And we don't uh, know Fly, why. I don't know. I, I guess I look alike. Uh, I have the same uh, same gestures. I don't know. And uh, flying is um, it was an, uh, it was before it was a flying Russian. Is uh, one group of uh, Argentinian players. They gave me this uh, this name, and uh, so I put all together: uh, monkey, flying monkey, and from Russia. So now you understand, no? <laughs> uh, oh, I totally understand. Yeah. I, now I okay. now I totally get it. All right. Well, again, just pretty recently, just a few weeks ago, you posted a video of you. You were around 12 years old, playing on a red clay court. You did a little interview. I'm wondering, mm. at that point in your life, what were your tennis goals? Well, I was, uh, before that trip, it was in Peru. Uh, this video is from Peru. And I was two months in Boletieri Academy. Before that, we came with the Boletieri Academy kids. And, uh, and uh, uh, Nick didn't take me, for, uh, take me to, the, uh, to the academy. He said that he refused me twice. And uh, yeah, really? and then, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, we, well, we flew with, um, with the team uh, to Peru. I made the finals. I lost to Luis Orna. Uh, he was a... Uh, good tennis player at my age. He was around, I think, uh, best uh, ranking 25 or something like that. So I played the final back then. So, and, uh, and the coach, I'm still in contact with the coach from the Bulletieri Academy, Paul Forsyth, so he sent me a video. And it was like fun, fun to see myself uh, a few years later. What, at that point, were you thinking that you for sure wanted to play professional tennis? Well, I had no other option. I mean, I was, uh, I was, I was lucky to get a sponsor uh, in Russia back then. It was the year 92, I'm talking about, when the Soviet Union collapsed and it was difficult uh, times with the money and especially for the, to find the money for the kid who plays tennis is not really a uh, sport number one in Russia. So it was a miracle, really a miracle uh, that happened. And then uh, the sponsor tried, uh, tried to send to Bolitieri and uh, so I can improve my skills. And then it didn't work out in Bolitieri and then they sent me to Spain. So for me, it was finding my, uh, my place where I can uh, develop my tennis skills and uh, end up um, Spain. So knowing what you know now, what advice would you have given that little 12 year old? Well, uh, I think the most important thing is to understand that you really like it uh, for the kids, because at the age of 12, they already know what they like it and they have the skills or not, they have the skills if they stress, uh, they're stressed about it or they're really passionate about it. If you are passionate about it, then you should continue. If you're not passionate about it, it's, it's time to move on, dedicate yourself to other, uh, other things. I know studies and uh, it's also an option. It's, um, I don't, and, uh, you never know what's the best option. The, the best option is when you go with your feelings. And if it's, uh, if it's really stressful for your tennis, you shouldn't. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. You're going to get bored anyway. And we have to say a little hello to uh, Yevgeny Kafelnikov. We just saw him. He joined us. Ah, okay. Hello, Yevgeny, of course. Yevgeny, brother. <laughs> brother. Do you, do you get to see Yevgeny often these days? Uh, not, not really because we're in quarantine, but uh, from time to time I see him. Uh, I 
I really admire this guy uh, because he was like uh, for us, for the kids, my generation was a. Uh, we used to look up to him, and he was the first one who won the Grand Slam uh, title. And for for Russia, it was big. So for me, to, to me, it gave me a lot of confidence. I can do that also. And uh, yeah, and he's been good to me when we were playing Davis Cup. He was behaving with me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. Good. I'm sure. Okay. We have some fan questions coming in. Yeah. We had one that was actually submitted earlier this week on Instagram from Sherry Tales. She's asking, who was the funniest guy on tour back when you were playing? All the, all the Argentinians are uh, very, very good. They're very fast with the mouth. And uh, Gaston Gaudio, Zabaleta, I mean, they're really good in chatting. And they're very fast, uh, very high IQ. And okay. uh, very fast brains. Um, I would say them. Uh, I would say them. I would pick up them. All right. Because the other guys, they're most... But every, actually, everybody has a good sense of humor. Uh, yeah, good. everybody has their own uh, touch of French, uh, Spanish, so everybody has shared their uh, national humors. Was there any were, was there any practical joke playing or pranks that happened in the locker room when you played? No, but every, everybody was trolling each other most of the time. Uh, it's like a giving yeah, giving shit to everybody and uh, let's see to pick up on somebody and you know this kind of things, but not harmless. No. Um, because we, we are like the family, you know, you're traveling all around the year. Week after week, you see each other. You need to be comfortable with everybody. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it makes it very really difficult to, uh, because it's a group of people. It's very, really like a family. Sure. All right, this yeah. one's from Meta12. She asks, what, what's your favorite Grand Slam of the four? Um, difficult. Uh, for me, I really like uh, Australia Open. Mm -hmm. Really, really good people. Uh, really good atmosphere. Uh, uh, Roland Garros also. Uh, Wimbledon, it's very, uh, very... Um, proper? Yes, very proper. But it has own touch. And uh, US Open is also, it's, it's, it's the city. Uh, the facilities, they improved from, uh, from the year, through the years. But uh, in the city, the, the New York itself, it just, uh, it's an amazing. So I cannot pick up. That's too good. Uh, everything is... Yes. Too hard. They're all great. Too right? hard, too hard. Yes. <laughs> All right. We also see a lot of animal love on your Instagram page, including lots of cats. So how many cats do you actually own? Tell us about the cats. Do you have one with you right now, by chance? Uh, yeah, well, I have two cats. One, uh, okay. one is around 10 years old. Another one is uh, five and she's pregnant. She's going to have a babies in, uh, in one month. Are you keeping all of them? Uh, no, I'm giving away them. I play with them for two months and then I give them away. Uh, I keep the best part for myself. And uh, well, uh, when, I, uh, when I started to live in Moscow, when I retired, I started to go to work uh, here in the government and uh, I wanted to have a proper family. So I had a girlfriend and so I need to have a cat. No? And then, uh, then I thought at some moment, I thought that my cat is bored uh, being by herself in, a, in an apartment or something. She needs a friend. And the form, and I made a mistake, and I bought another another girl. So I have two girls. So I have uh, yes, they are sharing me. So it's quite Fantastic. funny. They get right. they get they get angry. They get jealous. So I have all uh, yes, yes. Well, whole thing. They are very cute. Uh, yeah. So other than hanging out with your cats, Mary Baylart is wondering what are you doing to keep busy during quarantine? What have you been doing at home? Well, um, exercise for sure, uh, eat less. Uh, I, I started to do the um, uh, fasting for maximum I made two days, quite good. Uh, then I, I learned, uh, I've been reading a lot of books, um, a lot of lectures, um, or, you know, probably astrophysics, uh, astrophysics uh, Tyson. Yes, uh, yes. Neil deGrasse, Neil Neil yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, Rupert Sheldrake uh, is another guy. David Wilcock. So this kind of... Uh, Ed, uh, Hancock. Uh, so this kind of people, scientists, and uh, regarding uh, all the subjects, uh, consciousness, etc. Meditation, yes, these kind of things. You're, you're inspiring all of us who are, who are reading, you know, mystery novels over here. Yeah, why not? Why not? <laughs> That's that's fantastic. Another theme we see on your Instagram page is family. Lots of pictures with Dinara. 
how often do you get to see her outside of quarantine and what's your relationship like with Dinara today? Well, um, well, of course, we're okay with each other. I mean, like brother and sister for the normal way. Uh, we see each other not really often. She has her life. I have my life. Uh, whenever I saw her today, actually, uh, at the dentist. Really? We, yeah, we, we crossed today. Yeah, but we have a good relationship. You know, uh, we're trying to help each other uh, whenever I have some uh, some things. Yeah, but a good for a normal family, normal uh, positive family. Nobody's fighting. <laughs> Love that, and we have to say hello to Mary Pierce. Mary, hey Pierce Mary, what's up? How line. are you? Hello. <laughs> Mary was with us uh, was with us just last week, so we're making sure we get all the Hall of Famers right now. So ah, okay. again, thank you for joining us. Keep your questions coming. I want to ask also about Tanara. She's about seven years younger than you. Do you think her seeing what you accomplished helped inspire her at all? It's so it's incredible. I think to so many of us that you two share something that so few people have experienced in becoming number one in the world in your sport. Yeah, I'm really proud. I think my mother should be proud. Uh, my parents, they should be proud uh, about that. Uh, I think for my sister, yeah, I hope uh, I inspire, uh, inspired her more than uh, put a pressure on her. So she doesn't have to compete against me. I think it was like, uh, I hope to believe that it was an inspiration for her. And uh, it worked out pretty well for her. And um, and it's really cool to be brother and sister number one in the world. We have uh, sister, uh, William sisters, also mm -hmm. respect, but we are better because we are different, uh, yes, men and women. Sure. She did an interview uh, just last week with The Guardian where she talked about her journey to number one and then reaching number one and maybe realizing it wasn't as exciting or a as happy of a moment as she maybe thought. So I'm curious. Uh, who said what... that? You're, you're Dinara. Ah, okay. Uh, Dinara. Uh, okay. So... I'm just wondering what your experience was. So you worked so hard for so many years, you get the slam, you get the world number one ranking. What is the feeling when you finally accomplish those things that were your goals for so long? Uh, well, I have to admit, um, I've, been, I've been aiming there, but I never thought that I'm going to get to that point. And then okay. when it happened, uh, when it happened for me, it was a, like a surprise that I didn't know how to deal with this. I was young, I was 20 years old, no experience, nothing. So it was too much to, to handle. Mm -hmm. uh, I also won the Grand Slam, I beat Pete, and then it was like uh, something in my mind, something, uh, it was like, not depression, but it's like, okay, what's next, you know? It's like basically for the kid, you tell them, you give them the game, he finished the game, and then said, okay, I want a new game. But here is no new game. You need to continue this, but you need to... Uh, it's going to be this game, the same game for 10 years, at least. Sure. So it's quite difficult. And especially when you don't have anybody uh, with experience how to handle these kind of things and to, how to guide the kid uh, through that uh, moment. Uh, because it's a really delicate mem moment. Uh, um, for me, it was really tough. Yeah, no, I think all of that's understandable because you don't you don't maybe know what it's like until you're there, and so few people yeah. have experienced it. Nobody can really prepare you. Yeah, and also actually, uh, people they don't understand uh, how difficult it is uh, to to get there, and uh, very difficult to to understand where you are. And uh, unless you exactly, unless you achieve it, and then you can okay, uh, this is uh, this is it because everybody sees too many movies, you know, Rocky and everything is so so beautiful. It's amazing. It's uh, pictures. It's a new life. It's incredible. No, no, no. It's it's doubles or triples the pressure on you because you need to defend your um, um, your game uh, next year and next year and next year, and then you need to realize that a lot of uh, a lot of guys they want to beat you. Because they, uh, okay, you are number one. We're going to kick your ass. So you're going you're gonna to have guys coming out to full speed uh, from the, every single match because they have nothing to lose, but they have a lot to uh, turn. So it's going to be even more pressure. So it's, it's, and then it starts. Sure. Yeah, I know that, that, again, makes sense from the outside looking in. We had a few people ask this question. This one's from TyGuy84 on Twitter. What's your favorite memory on court with your sister? Well, uh, we played the Hopman Cup, uh, and for me it was, uh, I arrived there with a black eye, I had a fight in the nightclub, and... Uh... <laughs> Somebody actually asked this question too, they wanted to know the story of the black eye. 
Yeah, it was a st stupid thing. It was the uh, before New Year's, we went to the nightclub, and it's like all of a sudden, some some drunk drunk kids they pass by and they saw me, and they say, you know, like they they feel brave. So I had like I don't know five guys. I had to fight against five guys, and then they pulled us out of the uh, out of the uh, disco. And oh my God, it was a mess. And then I had to fly like this. So it's, uh, <laughs> so just hop out of the court and play doubles with your sister. Yeah, what I have to do. Yes, yes. So yeah, but it was the only the only way the only time we played together actually with my sister. So Something fun. to remember. Uh this one's from Yulia. What was the hardest match you ever played? Hardest. I guess it could be hard in, in different ways. Maybe mentally, it could be physically. Yeah, that's, uh, that's what I was thinking. So uh, which way? Let's, uh, let's be... We'll go physical. What's the physically hardest physical, match? Uh, physical match, I think. Uh, feather is always tough. Uh, Feather, I think Feather, because he makes you play extra. Um, you have to play your best tennis, but you have to do something extra. And it's really, uh, you spend a lot of energy on that. And you have to run uh, full time. You know that you're, gonna, you're not going to give you any uh, free points. You have to fight for it. And it's, it makes you tiring. Even before the match, you go in the match, you're already tired. It, it looks oh, exhausting. Yeah, it's already exhausting. Oh my God! You have you go out uh, on the grand slam against Federer. Say like five sets. Okay, so we need to be there for four hours running. Not no no free points, nothing. So it's kind of. We're gonna talk more about Federer just a little bit later. I want to oh, ask yeah. as well. There are a lot of photos on your Instagram feed from your trips to South America. A lot of time mm. spent in Peru. Why did you first decide to travel there, and what do you love about it? Well, I had some, uh, I had some questions, internal questions. Okay. <laughs> and then, uh, and then some, uh, some people, they, uh, they said, okay, you take a, take a trip to Peru. And I think the, uh, some of the people who are watching us, they understand what's, what means Peru. And when you have some inner questions. So you go there and you start to uh, unwrap your stuff, um, deal with your internal uh, problems, and then you start to work on yourself and you see the results and then you continue. It's like a, it's, it's a path. It's not, the, it's not the goal. It's not like one time you're going to fix everything, but I see how the way, the way my life is improving, the way I think I'm improving uh, and I'm feeling happy each time and uh, more understanding. So I think it's it works. I mean, it's not for everybody, obviously, but uh, but for many people it can be helpful. You feel to... you had you got the answers to your questions? Do you think? Yes, yes, yes. Of course. Yes. Are you able? To, are any of those questions questions you you would want to share with with fans? No, but I think it's it's everybody has own. It's very individual. It's very sure. int intimate thing. But it's uh, uh, but let's talk about, for example. Uh, deal with the fear, you know, phobias or these kind of things, uh, uh, anxiety, or these kind of things. Uh, and then you you need to uh, ask the internal questions. And then these kind of things, they help you out. They have enough, you have the tools to answer these questions. And this is how it works. And then it's uh, once you understand the mechanism of how it's working, then you start to work on it. It's interesting, the process to discover sure. yourself. So I think it's uh, it's a good but not for everybody, that's for sure. Sure, I think some people might be out there taking notes right now oh, from dear. philosopher Murat. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> no, that's great. Uh, also, again, if you're looking at, at sort of the things that you've posted over the past few years, there are very few photos of you with a racket in your hand. And a lot of times you see former players, they like to reminisce about the old days and about the times during their career. That hasn't necessarily been your style. And I'm curious uh, why that is. Good question. I don't know. It's, uh, I feel like uh, I don't need to post anything of that. It was a part of my life. Uh, and uh, everybody can go on YouTube they wanna, if they want to see it. But uh, to expose myself as I listen to how cool I am, uh, it's okay. No, no I mean, I, I, don't, I don't mind, but I don't, it's not my, not my type. Uh, so you feel like you've mentally moved on from... Yeah, I moved time. on, yes. It's my, it's my another life and it's in the past. It's okay. I'm, uh, it's, I'm gra very grateful for that. And uh, sure. it's because 
life is stay uh, for me life is in, uh, based on stages you know you need to move on uh, in some, certain things so if you drag it with you i don't know if it's i moved on let's put it this way all right well speaking of that and, and since this is the hall of fame do you keep your trophies displayed anywhere oh my god this is uh, i you know that uh, i have to admit i don't have uh, i don't have the trophy of uh, australian open uh, winner of Australian Open. I don't have the trophy of US Open. I don't have the trophy when I became number one. I don't have any trophies, actually. Uh, they, they're around in the uh, office of my ex-manager, then in the house of my parents. I don't keep it. I don't know. I don't know. Something is... Uh, uh, for me, it's... I don't know. I don't know. So I don't your keep friends them. keep the trophies for you, then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Family. Yeah. Yes. All right. Yes. Very good. Uh, Let's see. Jasmine is asking, do you still play tennis from time to time? Do you get out on the court? Uh, not really. Uh, some, well, sometimes if somebody asks me, uh, for example, Khachanov or Rublev when they are uh, in Moscow or when I, we cross somewhere, I can hit with them. But rather than that, I, um, I don't hit. I have some, some other things to do. And then uh, I play only if I go to play a senior tour. And then I hit some balls like two weeks before. I put my butt in shape and uh, I hit some balls and that's it. It's like riding a bike, right? Yeah, yeah, don't forget it. Uh, but you do, you see less. Uh, the eyes, something is wrong with the eyes now. Oh, okay, all right. Uh, well, well th we can help with that. There are things that can help with that. Uh, yeah. So you answered the question about whether or not you play. Do you watch much tennis? And if so, which players today do you most like to watch? No, I didn't watch for for nine years tennis. Actually, really? uh, no, actually I saw a couple of matches, but uh, throughout ten years. But the normal match I saw two matches in Australia this year it was a Rublev's match. He played against Goffin. Uh, oh my God, it was so hot. Oh my God! And then uh, I saw the finals, uh, TM and uh, Djokovic. That's it. Uh, Are there any players that you like? to watch so if, if you know that so and so is playing maybe you make a little extra effort to possibly watch or no yeah well, i think i bet on, on the russians but they need to prove that i have to watch them <laughs> 15 16 and 15 16 in the world in the ranking oh my god until when they get to top 10 then we're, then we're gonna watch them okay a little challenge <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> good stuff i have actually spoken to a few players in the past year who have listed you as somebody who They've looked up to Christian Garin was one of them. Uh, Andre Rublev, who you already mentioned. How do you feel knowing that you inspired a younger generation? Well, I'm feeling uh, happy for that. Uh, I hope uh, they learn not uh, only the good stuff, not the, <laughs> not the wrong stuff. The wrong stuff they should learn on my mistakes. And uh, well, and they are also cool, cool guys and actually nice, nice kids, nice educated kids. So for me, it's a pleasure. Uh, if somehow I can help with the advice or something, because sometimes they call me, ask me some things, questions, which is uh, like a friendly way. So, and um, I think it's a good relationship actually, uh, like that, you know, like, well, they're young, younger brothers for me. That's great. So, All right. And that actually segues well into our next question. This is from Sherry Tales again on Instagram. Have you ever been approached by any ATP or WTA players uh, for you to coach them? Uh, well, uh, Rublev and Hachanov, uh, they, uh, they asked me, but um, I'm taking another year or so off and then I will see because I'm not ready to travel now. Uh, anyway, you're going to travel now. But, and also it's, uh, it's another thing that, um, that you always have it in the head. Uh, once you are too close with these guys, it's difficult to be, good, be a coach because you need to uh, draw the line. So, yes, exactly. And I, I prefer to stay friends with them and then become a, their coach. And then it's going to be, uh, I don't want confrontation. I want to be helpful and not to, to fight. And, uh, and once you become a coach, it's a different story, I think. And they need to put this uh, the, um, on the side, the friendship. And it's, uh, you cannot mix it up because they, 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 they disrespect you. And they don't do whatever you, they need to do. All right. Well, Marat, we're going to move on. We're calling this next segment Marat Moments. And what's going to happen, I'm going to hold up a photo and you get to tell me what was going through your head at that moment. So this first one is from the 2000 U.S. Open trophy ceremony. You are hugging your trophy there that we're not totally sure where it is currently. 
just minutes after yeah. defeating Pete Sampras, what was going through your mind at that moment? I couldn't believe it. I was in, uh, in, in shock, in shock back then. You know, like, oh my God, this is really happening to me. Am I holding, is it, is it real? And then, uh, yeah, it's uh, to, uh, to that moment I didn't realize yet, it didn't arrive to my brain that uh, I want to use open. I'm just holding the thing and I don't know, like, what, uh, what is this? I, I heard it eventually sunk in. Is it true that you celebrated that night with Lenny Kravitz? Yeah, well, we we, uh, we crossed in one bar and I, uh, well, we sit down uh, for me, Lenny Kravitz. Can you imagine? Uh, I, I'm a kid of 20 years old. They just want you to open, but still, I'm still a kid from Valencia, you know? And yeah. then you have a Lenny Kravitz that you have a DV, uh, the cassette uh, in, your, in your room in Valencia. A few years ago, that you were listening to him and all of a sudden he's asking you to sit down with him and have, uh, have some drinks. So, of course, I run away, you know, like I said, okay, nice to meet you. And I, and I run away. I couldn't deal with the pressure too much. He's a star. That's a, that's a fun <laughs> memory, though. That's pretty cool. All right. Here was another fan. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the name, but uh, he or she wanting to know uh, what you remember from that match with Pete. Uh, straight sets win. What sticks out to you? Uh, it was the, the, the best uh, match ever i ever played in my life and i play against uh it looked that pete is playing very slow for me that sensation when you're in a zone yeah. that anything uh you just you read everything you see everything and it's impossible does the ball, does the ball look this big bigger <laughs> yeah exactly that's what i mean very cool all right here's the next marat moment this is shaking hands with roger mm. federer after your four hour and 38 minute five set win in the semis of the 2005 australian open you talked a little bit about how tough it was to play roger what were you thinking at that moment uh well uh i already lost two finals before that uh that semi-final and for me it, I knew that if I'm gonna win uh, I'm gonna beat Federer which is uh, almost impossible then I have uh, Hewitt and I mean it's, if you beat Federer you should beat Hewitt but it's all extra pressure afterwards so for me uh, beating uh, Federer wasn't I couldn't celebrate it at my uh, the most it would be the final it would be the best moment but you beating the federal should be the final then you have to play against you it is like oh okay i have another another one the tough one where you have to it's a must to win to beat hewitt and already you're thinking after that match oh my god i have to play another match to win it's not it's not over yet so it's kind of um, couldn't couldn't so enjoy there was it more work to do is what yes. you're thinking in that handshake yes. so mark lowerson on twitter actually asked a follow-up question to that he wanted to know what it felt like in that final to sort of deny the australian fans their local champion what do you mean um, just they of course i would assume want the aussie to win although i know that the australian fans appreciated you as well and were very fair with you but, ah, okay. uh, was there more satisfaction knowing, <laughs> knowing that you were denying the Australian fans? Well, actually, Australian fans are very, um, uh, very sportive. So they really appreciate, um, uh, appreciate the, the sport uh, and um, the skills of other players from other countries, which is, uh, which is good. Also, the, uh, the French crowd is the same. They're very mm -hmm. sportive. And uh, so they really know how to appreciate. They, 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 I didn't feel that they would cheer up more for Leighton than, uh, than, for, than for me. So it was equal. And uh, I think the people really enjoyed it. So it, for the people, I think, didn't care, actually, who would win, to be honest. When I was doing uh, some, some digging before this interview, I saw that you and Roger actually won a doubles tournament together in 2001 in Gestad. What was it like playing doubles with him? Well, it was the first uh, tournament we won in doubles, actually, uh, each one of us. And uh, you see how, how good luck I gave him to him? Is he still playing? You I see? mean, all because of you. Of course, of course. You should send me some, uh, some uh, bank check. Come on. <laughs> if it wouldn't for these doubles, he would never become a number one in the world. It's obvious, no? <laughs> it's totally obvious, for sure. <laughs> no, Roger is, is fun. It's, uh, it's good to... Uh, it's nice to see him play and when you play with him uh, next to him he plays so smooth it, he sees the uh, is the is the only guy that um, for me that uh, i know that he's doing much better uh, i could do the same he, we would do the same thing but he would do it much better 
Very so it's like, and it's it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to watch him. It's like, uh, it's it's like a genius. So he mastered tennis to its the, the uh, incredible level. So it's it's a pleasure to even to watch it. You don't need are to you, play even. Are you amazed that he's still doing it? Yeah, really. At the age of thirty nine, uh, still running. Look how many uh, five set matches he played in Australia. And he's still running and he's still playing. He's still hungry. He doesn't have any gray hair. He so still have hair. <laughs> yes, unbelievable. Swiss, Swiss watch. It, it's, it is incredible. All right, here's the next one. Good memories here. I would think this is induction day 2016 in Newport. Other than the fact that it was maybe a little bit steamy that day, what sticks out to you when you remember that weekend? That was the hottest uh, moment of uh, the hottest day. Oh, my God. It was, it was uh, a little warm, just a little. A little bit, yeah. A little, a little, and a little humid. Oh my God! And uh, but well, for me it was the probably the most important thing uh, ever happened in my life. Actually, to be um, to be inducted in the tennis hall of fame. Uh, I think the players after after the careers they realize it how it's important to be. It's like a part of the history. Mm -hmm. So and I'm the first Russian. So for me, I'm very proud of uh, of the Russians of myself. And uh, really, I was happy that. Uh, Everybody who voted for me, and it means that they are, I'm okay with them, you know. And uh, and Todd Martin was great to uh, great to me, so it was really friendly atmosphere. Jimmy Connors came to say uh, nice words uh, about me, so it's like oh, for me, it's dream come true big time. This is uh, really the one of the no the most important moment in my uh, in my entire life. Yes, in, uh, regarding tennis. Oh, very cool. It gives me, gives me chills a little bit because it is, it's such a special place. And until you've experienced it, it's hard to imagine. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. It's, it's a history in tennis. Yep, absolutely. All right. Now, if, if you are joining us, we have a few more minutes with Marat, a few more minutes to get your questions in. So mm. keep those coming. And Marat, this is your last Marat moment. This is you as the captain of the ATP Cup with her and Hachanov and Daniel Medvedev. What was that experience like for you? Uh, very talented, both of them. Uh, very different uh, as a person. Um, Karen is more open. Uh, Daniel is a bit, uh, more introvert. Uh, very interesting points of view they have, the way they, they, their perception. Uh, very unique. And uh, very. I'm very happy for them that they are young. They have a long... Uh, a long career, I hope, and they are quite smart for their age. That they, how they are building up their career, how they, how serious they're taking tennis, and how professional they became, and it's uh, it's good to see. And then, uh, but it's also interesting to see when you are basically as a captain, as you see yourself uh, in them, and this they do the same stupid mistakes that I used to do. So it's quite funny to see, and uh, somehow I have to deal with it. So you, cool. in that setting, you mentioned it was tough for you as a coach because you didn't like the discipline. You didn't like pushing people to do things, but you were able to do it in that setting? They have own coaches, so uh, it was okay. But it was uh, during the match, yes, you see the same, same mistakes, same mistakes, nothing, nothing new. And, it's, uh, and then it's the idea how to explain them to improve that. And this is the ability you need. Would you want to be the ATP Cup captain again? I would love to, yeah. I really enjoyed it because a good, we have a good team and uh, we're, we're missing their Rublev, but I think we have a good team. We can win the ATP Cup uh, next year for sure. And if the guys, they call me, I would be my pleasure. I really enjoyed it being there and uh, yeah, support them. As someone who played a lot of Davis Cup, I believe 10 years of your career you participated in Davis Cup. Mm. How did ATP Cup compare? I think it's it's a different different a different for kind of the same, but it's different format. A different format, actually, for me, in my opinion. And uh, it's it's a good uh, time of the year. It's a great idea. And uh, it's a great location. And uh, Davis Cup is a history. So it's, you cannot really compare, even though it's, it's a lot of similarities. I would, I would put it this way, actually. Very nice. Well, Marat, ah, this, is, <laughs> this, is, this has been so much fun to talk to you, to catch up with you. When tennis returns, 
even though we know you don't watch a whole lot of it, what are you most looking forward to? Well, I would like, uh, I'm playing the, um, the French over uh, Ron Garros uh, senior, so I would like to come there a little bit early, watch some matches. I uh, have some great wine, some restaurants, and hopefully I will come to Youth Open if they, everything uh, comes to normality. Well, I, I hope you get to uh, celebrate the 20th anniversary of your 2000 title. Yes, time flies. My God. My God, 20 years. It's true. Wow. There you go. Well, again, Brad, it has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and you can join us next week for another edition of Hall of Fame Live. We'll be talking to Jim Courier, and we will see you all then. Thanks again, Brad. Say, say hello to Jim. Will for sure. Ciao, ciao.